Welcome to How to Yu-Gi-Oh! Tips and Tricks 13. Hand Trap Breakdown Counter slash negation hand traps Mechanic hand traps Board breaker hand traps Floodgate hand traps Okay, with that being said, and with the the four different types of hand trap classifications that I am mentioning in this video, let's go into detail about these kind of hand traps and why we would use them in decks and how they affect gameplay in Yu-Gi-Oh! Okay, let's first start with counter negation hand traps. These include infinite impermanence, Cyphrim Gear Gamma, Effect Veiler, Ghost Mourner Moonlit Chill, Heavenly Zephyr Miradora, and Herald of Orange Light. So what do all these cards have in common? Well, these are hand traps that you'll tend to find that are useful in negating monster effects and tend to be the most common of um, hand traps. You tend to find that Infinite Impermanence, Gamma especially, and Effect Veiler are three of the most used hand traps we have in the game. Ash Blossom is there included, but that's in another category of hand traps that we'll be talking about later on in this video. But anyways, you tend to find that uh, Infinite Permanence, Gamma, and Effect Veiler are the hand traps that are most used. Moonlit Chill is used sometimes not all the time but i think this tend to be used you know possibly in game three sometimes maybe um you know to win in time in higher events or maybe you know in your side deck it's a very it's a very side deck hand trap that you don't really use that often i think the only hand trap that we don't use that's not used competitively or at any at all is heavenly zephyr miradora because with its effect in theory it would be useful really to help you win games because you cannot respond to it is as it's the only hand trap on this list that you cannot your opponent cannot respond to so its activation will go through regardless of whatever happens like you can't stop its summoning condition you can't stop its its negation but it has all these good things going for it and while all that works in theory in practice it doesn't really work because its effects of what it does uh, hit or negate are too narrow and it's quite xenophobic. Yeah, so that's really all I've got to say really about uh, this counter negation slash negation hand traps. Let's move on to the next category. Mechanic hand traps. What do I mean when I say mechanic hand traps? Mechanic hand traps, right, are game mechanics that we find in Yu-Gi-Oh! And these hand traps deal with set mechanics. It's very important to realize that game mechanics are some of the most powerful mechanics in the game. What comes in second place in terms of strength are mechanic hand traps. But why are mechanic hand traps so important? Because mechanic hand traps deal with a game mechanic that certain decks favor over others. For example, we have Branded that's out at the moment. And if you're to Ash Blossom Branded Fusion, well, usually the turn ends. And for the Branded plan, they can't really do much. Because it deals with the game mechanic that branded focuses on you have ghost bell again uh this is a card that deals with movement of cards in the gra uh in the graveyard you know any kind of movement and ghost bell stops that that could be debilitating especially for de for a deck that uses that game mechanic we have droll and lockbird this is uh a hand trap again that focuses on decks that like to add a lot and that's important because if your deck if decks like to add a lot and drawn lock lockbird is is dropped then you tend you find that that deck can't do anything at all because it's so 
purpose of soul reliance is on adding cards we have flying c so flying c again um is a hand trap that deals with stopping your opponent from xyz summoning while this was a great card during the xyz era now it's not really so powerful as we have link summoning so your opponent could use a flying c for the link summons but you get the general idea these are the examples of hand traps that we have that deal with certain game mechanics that Yu-Gi-Oh has and denies those game mechanics to your opponent let's see some more game mechanic hand traps and so that includes contact c as you can see in front of you um this is a hand trap that means that your opponent cannot um link cannot deal with any form of extra deck summoning as long as this card is on the field but if they are to do link summoning they have to use contact c on the field now where is this useful this is a card useful for decks that do not rely on link summoning that have to do a fusion summoning especially this is where contact c is very powerful because contact c is such an odd hand trap for fusion decks to, to face because they have to use it as fusion material whereas with synchro summoning they it could be synchro it could be used your opponent could use that for a synchro summon um with xyz summon it could be played for rank six same thing goes with link summoning but fusion summoning is a little bit different okay so let's go to the next sort of mechanical hand trap we have here which is gnome material gnome material again in theory is meant to be d barrier but in the hand so in theory this is a, this would be really good right you know such a powerful effect that we've that we have as d bear as a hand trap wow really great really exciting however the theory starts to fall apart and practicality this is a hand trap that has n that has been played i think competitively once but has vanished from a competitive scene with only that one playthrough one of the biggest issues we can see with gnome material even though in theory right it's meant to be a really powerful card is that it's very xenophobic and has a extremely hard activation condition so while yes it's it can it being a d barrier in practice meaning it can stop um all forms of extra deck summoning so it's a more powerful version of flying c and contact c the downside of this is that you're that you have to control new cards in order to activate this card which means your chances of activating this card are relatively slim in the Yu-Gi-Oh game environment we have ddd crow ddd crow again is another hand trap that deals with movement in the graveyard so we see it being a downplayed version of ghost bell a haunted mansion but indeed it's again doing with graveyard movement and so it's very um you know if your opponent is moving cards in the graveyard or stuff like that you can just move it yourself and they get some effects and finally we have ghost sister spooky dogwood similar again to ghost mona winter chill this is a hand trap that is used primarily because of the new time rules now in your side in your side deck you put it in your side piece your sideboard and you practically put it in game three so that you could gain some life points and win in time and so these are the mechanic hand traps that i'm talking about so mechanical hand traps are you know are being released in Yu-Gi-Oh and do exist and we th i think konami is not releasing anymore at the moment but maybe we'll get some more in the future okay that's all i've got to say about this let's go to the next um issue or the next topic rather of hand traps board breaker hand traps currently at this point in time we only have two board breaker hand traps in Yu-Gi-Oh. that's kurikara divine carnate and ibiru the primal being these are the only two these are the only board breaker hand traps we have in Yu-Gi-Oh at this point in time 
Kurikara seeing a lot of play nowadays and Nibiru actually going out of favor. In fact, Nibiru for the last few formats, I would say rather, since like, um, since, you know, 2020, I would feel has been power cramped, right? I've been saying this for a while now, but I feel like Nibiru really, even though it is respected, but it's not really respected because in fact, going as far as this year, players abandoning the card altogether because decks have evolved, or rather Konami has been making archetypes do more and more things where Nibiru is simply not enough. Stopping a deck from doing five summons, sometimes it's not enough. And sometimes you need to go a little bit extra. And we need to really clear the board for what it's worth. And Kurikara, seems to do just that while yes it hasn't prevented the best deck from winning don't don't get it twisted don't get it wrong but it does help to alleviate uh some issues i think we've seen with some disgusting with a disgusting and broken strategy and i feel King kurikara's conclusion as our new board breaker hand trap is great for yu gi health overall and has proven itself to be a really standout hand trap and funnily enough it's a fire monster hmm what is it with fire and hand traps making them mainstay staples and making them the best hand traps of all time we have ash blossom of joyous spring happens to be its attribute happens to be fire Sounds awfully familiar. Is Kurikara going to gain legendary status? Is it going to be the definitive hand trap of all time when it comes to board breaking? That is something that we're going to have to see in the near future. But for now, uh, Kurikara and Nibiru are our only board breaker hand traps we have in Yu-Gi-Oh! at this present point in time. And we shall, and when building decks, or rather when you want to have hand traps that deal with board breaking, these are the two uh, hand traps that you need to be looking out for that need to go, that you need to facilitate and need to definitely pay attention to, to putting in your deck. Kurikara, I would say more so now than ever before. In fact, I would rate Kurikara more than Nibiru. The issue with Nibiru, especially against uh, combo decks, is that is that most combo decks now, especially combo decks, and I've been saying this since uh, 2020, have a negate on board because the problem is we have too many generic negates lying around that were created before 2020. Um, and this is a severe problem because Nibiru just sits there and does absolutely nothing. The amount of times you're gonna have, you're gonna resolve Nibiru against uh, a combo deck, 90% of the time is 0%. In fact, there are some edge cases where yes, you will successfully resolve Nibiru, but those again are edge cases. The rule to the norm really is Nibiru is gonna sit in your hand and is usually 90% of the time never going to be resolved. So bear that in mind. Okay, and I think that's about covers it. So those are the hand trap breakdowns that you've seen so far with those, uh, you know, those three headlines. Let's go to the last point of hand traps. And finally, we have floodgate hand traps. Now these are the last category of hand traps that we talk about in Yu-Gi-Oh! Floodgate hand traps. Why are they called floodgates? Because these are hand traps that when they're successfully activated essentially mean that your opponent ends their turn. And Jordan Lockbird has be, is starting to be considered whether it is a floodgate hand trap, but I would say it is not a floodgate hand trap. Same thing with uh, Ash Blossom, because we can say that about Ash Blossom as well. Like, Ash Blossom, you know, you can activate it against certain decks and their turn ends. That doesn't make it a floodgate hand trap. What do I mean when I talk about a floodgate hand trap? A floodgate hand trap 
is a hand trap, right, that deals with a core mechanic that is in Yu-Gi-Oh! that if it is denied, it affects every single deck the same way. And one of those core mechanics that's come up now is banishing. Banishing, for the longest time, has become a core mechanic for a lot of decks in Yu-Gi-Oh! right now. And if you were to deny this mechanic of banishing, a core mechanic now of, of a lot of decks and the game's playstyle, then essentially what you are basically hitting 80% of decks out there right now and basically telling them you cannot do what you want to do. Whether you want to admit it or not, banishing is such a core cool mechanic of the game, especially in modern Yu-Gi-Oh right now, that, it, that denying it essentially, tell, essentially tells most decks to end their turn straight out the gate. Our next Floodgate Hand Trap we have is Dimension Shifter. Dimension Shifter is huge and possibly massive. The best example being, this was a, the only hand trap to deal with a tier 0 deck we had at the time, which was tier elements. Tier elements, right, being, I would say, the most broken deck of all time, um, even, even beating Zodiac right, was the only hand trap that could deal with tier elements. But let's leave that aside. What makes Dimension Shifter a floodgate hand trap? Well, it's a floodgate hand trap because it denies the graveyard to both players. This is important, as the graveyard is the, I would call it the Yu-Gi-Oh! Bible, the Yu-Gi-Oh! Creed, the Yu-Gi-Oh! Law. Every card, when it's used, goes to the graveyard. Denying the graveyard itself is denying death. A lot of cards, in fact, most cards, 90% of cards, I would say, even rely on the graveyard. Not having a graveyard in itself basically removes 90% of the game right there. Meaning that 90% of the time, if a... Dimension Shifter successfully resolves against whatever deck you're facing, it means your opponent is going to end their turn right there. There are very few, unless the deck is an anti-meta deck, you will automatically be affected and possibly hindered if a Shifter is activated on you. And most of the time, or nearly 100% of the time, if a shifter successfully resolves against the opponent, they'll automatically end their turn. There are some exceptions, but still, 100% of the time, if shifter successfully resolved, your opponent is ending their turn straight up without doing anything. And finally, we have Chaos Hunter, similar to Lancia, but whereas Lancia, right, affects both players... Chaos Hunter affects only the opponent. And again, it is a kind of floodgate. We've got to remember that banishing is a core, me is a core mechanic of Yu-Gi-Oh! now. It is no longer something that is on the back burner, that is fringe, that is something that boss monsters have. It has now become a core mechanic of the game. So denying banishment, just denying the aspect of your opponent banishing cards... Is already too strong. We have a lot of cards in the game. For example, a lot of search, a lot of powerful search cards need banishment. Pot of Prosperity, Pot of Extravagance, to, to name these two classic examples. In fact, Pot of Prosperity itself, right, needs to banish cards in order to, for you to dig deeper into your deck. We have the best uh, deck currently in the game needs banishment. And activating Lancey, right, means that the deck will end its turn straight straight out the gate. Especially if you have to activate that against a Cash Terror player. Unless they, yeah, they really can't do anything. Unless they have a cross out designator, really, there is nothing the Cash Terror player is going to do. So these are the hand traps, or the four category of hand traps, that we have in Yu-Gi-Oh! So hopefully you can bear this in mind. And so let's go to the conclusion.
of this video. Okay, so to come to the overall conclusion, when it comes to the hand trap breakdown, there are four types, categories, that hand traps are associated with. One, counter slash negation hand traps. Two, mechanic hand traps. Three, board breaker hand traps. And four, floodgate hand traps. 100% of hand traps fall under these four categories in Yu-Gi-Oh! And when it comes to hand trap usage, it's usually important to understand what kind of hand trap you are using and the category in which it falls under. Most hand traps that are used in Yu-Gi-Oh! tend to be of the counter slash negation hand traps and mechanical hand traps. These where they are ne counter negation, these are hand traps that just basically negate cards that your opponent has straight up. Simple play negation. We have mechanical hand traps that deal with the game mechanics. These are hand traps that deal with game mechanics that you give that every deck plays, uh, uses at, at that point in time. And those are the hand traps that tend to be used in the normal competitive scenes. What happens when are board breaker hand traps and floodgate hand traps used? Those are the kind of hand traps are used when we have competitive or competitive scenes where we're seeing the prevailing decks using unfair strategies, right? Strategies that are unfair that allow the deny play completely. And we're seeing that coming through with the post Dune archetype upgrade of Manadium. Manadium is now potentially able to do an unfair strategy and deny your opponent's play at all with the quick summoning of Hot Re Red King Calamity. Um, being able to deny your opponent to activate any card on their turn. While there's a lot of hoops and hurdles for uh, Manadium post Dune to do this, still the ability to do this and the ability for players to start looking for board breaker hand traps and floodgate hand traps to be part of their main staple in the competitive scene is not a good sign of a healthy uh, competitive deck in the competitive scene. A healthy competitive deck tends to, we or healthy competitive decks in the competitive scene tend to, we tend to use counter slash negation hand traps or mechanic hand traps. That tends to show a sign of a healthy competitive scene. Using more board breaker hand traps and more floodgate hand traps is not a sign of a healthy uh, scene. So I need you to bear this in mind when it comes to hand trap selection and hand trap usage, especially when playing the game. So that's something, that's the overall conclusion, and that's something that I think I will mention here. And that's all I've really got to say about hand traps in general. Hopefully, you'll find this helpful in building decks in Yu-Gi-Oh! We come to the end of this video. So, as I like to say, you are one step closer to becoming a Yu-Gi-Oh! Master. My faith, right, is in your hands.